You can access the entire episode now on our website, ForbiddenKnowledge.news, Rockfin, Rumble, and all podcast platforms. Chaos Magic is kind of like the MMA of magical <laughs> practices, where it kind of integrates a little bit of each discipline into it, and you just take what you want from it, right? Pretty much, and that's where, again, that's where <laughs> you get Kenneth Grant's work, where they incorporate... Again, dude, I'm a weirdo, so I love Lovecraftian stuff. I love all yeah. the weird Cthulhu mythos, and these occultists, bro, these grown... These grown people, these adults are taking these made up entities that were presented to Lovecraft in his dream state, which dreamlands are a real place. I think that's a real landscape. I think that when we go to sleep, it's an altered state of consciousness. And, you, and if you're able to really tap into that, I think that's where people can astral project or, you know, have out of body experiences, which I've tried astral projection and i can't make it happen purposefully like i can't not purposefully but on purpose right i can't make it happen mm. how some people are like oh i was able to travel to wherever and and go here and there and all that stuff i'm not able to do that for the longest time i did i haven't had it in, in, in a quite a long time probably a year year and a half but there was a period in my when i first started podcasting actually where i was having sleep paralysis nightly like it was like a weird thing and it happened so frequently that I was able to, I already knew how to get out of it as soon as it would happen. And I haven't had it happen in like a, probably a year, year and a half, but, and I didn't experience like the old hag sitting on your chest or anything, or shadow people, how a lot of people say, what I experienced was the sense of dread. So the sense that something is gonna happen and there might be something there, but I never saw anything. I never saw any visuals or anything but okay so back again lovecraft was presented this mythos through his dreams and these groups the typhonian oto which is an offshoot of the oto they adopt and and the reason behind is you're able to adopt that god or that entity or that deity for your for your procedure for your operation for that one time and then you chuck it out that in my opinion yeah. is is really dangerous because think about all the things that we're being exposed to following this chaos magic doctrine that is the super bowl for an example for one example I mean, that, that that was recent this past weekend the super bowl they do all this crazy ritual stuff one time boom and then as soon as they're wrapped up there they just chalk it out the window and they've already worked their way into your subconscious they've already implanted all these symbols all these things into your subconscious and they're there working again like a mimetic parasite or something like that and the reason this is important is because it's always been a war for information you know alex jones has been right since the very beginning it's it's an info war if you think about if, you, if we go to the very beginning all right that no matter what your cosmology is what your belief system is it goes back to the idea of information what happened in the Garden of Eden? Let's just use the, the Christian point of view. What happened in the Garden of Eden? God said, you can do whatever you want here in this other dimension, this other realm where you have all these, you're in this garden. You can do whatever you want. Just don't do one thing. <laughs> just don't do one thing. <laughs> don't eat from yeah. that tree right there, bro. And you can do anything else. Yeah. It's like, well, why can't I eat from that tree? That's the tree of what? Of knowledge, of good and evil right so don't eat from that tree and once they took the first bite from that app from that well we always attribute it to the apple right it's never specifically said it's an apple they never, they say it's a fruit they don't say which fruit but it's interesting that we always attribute it to the apple the apples have worms right worms are parasites uh darwin the father of evolution studied worm for 39 years bro he said, man is nothing but a worm. So what is he, what is he getting at there? You know, by the idea that we are all, you know, we come from a worm. Hmm. Like, I don't know that, that that's kind of odd there, right? Maybe Illuminati parasites of some sort, maybe the, right, right. These, the, when they entered the daughters of men, maybe it was a sort of possession or parasite, if you will. Right. Cause we always think like, oh, look at these Nephilim with their huge Nephilim dicks, you know, entering themselves <laughs> into these women. It's like, what if it wasn't like that? What if it was more of a possession type of thing? Like, like Twin Peaks, you know, possession is a possession doesn't discriminate. 
Okay. So it's always been about knowledge of some sort, some occult knowledge that the powers that be don't want you to have. Okay. So what a better way than to spread knowledge through the use of these sigils, these internet memes. And it's interesting because, right, speaking on Alex Jones, speaking on Trump and the whole Keck movement and all that stuff, that's a fraud, right? Alex Jones is known for what? Let me, let me play the clip here real quick. The... Like I'm putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. So Alex Jones, who is also a meme, right? Trump is a meme. Alex Jones is a meme. These are in, again, maybe they, this is part of like this chaos magician archetype, this gesture archetype, if you will, like these characters that are here to disrupt reality to cause a sort of unrest because these are explosive characters if you look at it trump is an explosive like people either love him or they hate him alex jones people either love him or they hate him right depending on which which setting that they're in so the frogs it's interesting because and the reasoning why i think that the internet meme is an evolution of of the magic square the first magic square was introduced to the emperor on the back of a turtle shell okay and this legend goes back i think to like somewhere bce and this emperor was sitting next to this body of water and this turtle floated up and he saw on its back right this square and magic squares first started with numbers right so you have the pythagoreans numbers have always been giving this right this mathesis this mystical view right numbers uh, the matrix they kind of sort of control reality everything's mathematical the fibonacci sequence all these different things and then there was an evolution because the magic square went from letters from numbers to then letters so you had letterism introduced there you had the idea of charging it with sigils words right grammar grimoire it all comes from the same place when you're casting a spell you're spelling things you're you're it's a, it's a vibration if, even if it's not right i think that writing is a sort of divinatory device which we're going to get into some chaos magicians who believed that ex that exact thing and they used it and so the, the evolution of the magic square you have numbers letters letterism and then in my opinion it's it's shifted over to right more of a pictorial magic because as a kid when you pick up a book or when we were kids I, I remember i would always pick up a book and i'd go straight to the pictures if a book didn't have pictures i wouldn't look at it so even a child knows to open up a book and look at the pictures and why is that well paracelsus in the 16th century when they were talking about pictorial magic they understood that pictures had more of an effect on people, a longer lasting effect than text did. That's why in these cathedrals, they painted all this iconography and these symbols, okay? Because they had on the lower class that couldn't read, they had what? They had to look at the pictures. And that to them was their divine experience, okay? And then here you get into simulacra and simulation where the worship of the image comes into place where people start worshiping this statue of jesus as if it were jesus well that's not that's a representation that's a simulacrum of the deity doesn't necessarily mean that it is but in today's time i mean people are right and so you have the idea you have the evolution and i think that it's centralized itself and landed i think there's a simplification of this magical system and that's again that's dangerous because that gives them that much more reach and accessibility to the general public than they normally would you don't need to be dressing up and doing all the ceremonial stuff which they still do like the super the super bowl and all these different things right they still kind of sort of do that but now it's like it's it's a dumbed down version where it's much more simple and they can access people quicker memes everyone collects memes it is it's kind of like an evolution in a way even though it's more simple like you said when we first got on everything is seems to be moving faster in all aspects of our reality including of course this technology which is advancing exponentially as we see it unfold